Hello and welcome to another Morales Minute. These are quick tips and sage advice to level up your Web3 game development. Hi, my name's Sam. I'm a Unity certified developer at Morales. I have over 20 years of game dev experience and more than 10 years experience as a digital nomad. I love spending time in nature and practicing sports, as well as drawing, painting, and making music. Together, we'll learn more about the Unity Editor. Unity's flexible development platform offers incredible possibilities for real-time solutions, including games. Improve the quality and efficiency of your projects with these quick tips. Learn more about the Morales Web3 SDK by clicking the link above. And click here for the Web3 Unity SDK example project. To learn more about the SimCity Web3 sample game, watch this video. First, let's talk about local disk storage. Local disk storage is a custom class I created. The purpose was to have a cheap and easy way to write locally to disk. I serialized to and from using the JSON utility, and you can save strongly typed objects. Here's an example script that's using some of the highlights. First, there's a has operation. You can tell does the storage already have any data for a given type. Then assuming that there is some data there, you can get that data written from disk and serialized into C-sharp in the strongly typed object that you want using the load operation. And after updating or making any types of changes that you want to that object, you can save it back to disk. Now let's see how that works in the Morales example project. The Web3 Unity SDK examples project is a suite of standalone scenes, each that cover different Morales topics. While not explicitly a Morales feature, I added a scene here to talk about the local disk storage. We'll talk a bit more about the integration into the game project itself, and later I'll show how this example project is a great way to get started if you just want to understand the fundamentals of local disk storage. Now let's look at the SimCity Web3 sample game. Unity sample games are complete projects meant to show end-to-end -end how to use Morales and its features. You can download this sample project, the Web3 Unity SDK sample game for SimCity Web3, here. So at the point of this video here, where are we in development? Well, the game is already complete and has a few different ways that the data can be stored. What we're doing here is adding an update to add local disk storage to that game. What we're going to do is define our needs. We'll choose the solution. In this case, it's going to be local disk storage, the custom class. And then we'll integrate that storage into Unity. So the SimCity Web3 game is already complete. There's an earlier video I linked to where you can learn all about that project and how it was developed, but here we're just adding on a new feature. Now, this is just for educational purposes because ideally you would want to integrate what I'm about to show at the beginning of a project. That's where it would really pay some dividends. What's nice here is that because contract development using Solidity as this game uses on the Polygon Mumbai network, there's some asynchronous nature to both setting that up as well as working together on a team to get that set up. While you'd really love to have something that's just quick and easy to store some data, just as a temporary measure while you're working on the game. If I'd had the local disk storage available at the beginning, I would have created the complete game with that while the contract was being developed and integrated. Even after that contract is integrated, you do find that there's some delays and clumsiness to using it just because of the nature of needing to sign the transactions periodically through the game, having your mobile phone out, waiting for that signature, etc you can eliminate those weights by using a synchronous solution like local disk storage. So here is a place after we define our needs where we would choose one of several different solutions. I've already done that for us and chosen the local disk storage. Some of the benefits are that it's lightweight, it's synchronous, so it's just faster to use, it loads to disk, and it saves to disk. So how will we integrate it into the Unity project? Well, let's remember that the SimCity Web3 project uses a very light version of a model view controller architecture. That's shown here. It's the service layer that handles external data. Let's look at how that gets set up. So it's the controller that will ask a factory to give us the desired service. The factory knows about the different service options. In this case, we've got three. Historically, we had two. Let's take a look at that factory. Now the factory is just designed to decide which of the three options to use. Here, if we hard code the value for a particular run through to use the local disk storage, then the service for that is what's created. 
let's take a look at that service as a starting point. As we get into the code, this is where we're going to begin here. Now this is a game that shows a map of the world and allows us to buy and sell properties. This is going to be loading properties that already exist and saving any new properties or deleting new properties as you buy and sell. So the important methods that we look at here are load, save, and delete. We have two deletions because one of them is used to delete all the properties and one is just to delete the selected property. Here we are on Git at the examples project. This is the place of the Morales GitHub where you can download the examples project. And also here is where you can find the SimCity Web3 sample game. So that you can see me a little better as we go through the live coding, I'm going to lower the opacity. Here we are inside the examples project. Let's start by opening the readme. Here in the readme we see that we've already administered the backend, we've done the setup window, We've already added the example scenes to the build settings. If you're doing this on your end, please do that step too. You can load the Morales layout here if you like to have a nice clean layout to your Unity. And then you can open up one of the example scenes. We'll search in the project window and open up that scene. Let's give it a run. So here in this example scene, we see a little bit of info about the methods at the top. And then at the bottom, we can see that each time we click load, It does not have the object, so it creates it. And then it shows one of the custom values within the data, which is the number of clicks we've done. If I save the object using the save button, and then I click load again, here the has operation is true, so it's been loaded. Once you save it once, then every load after that, it's going to exist there. Now that we've clicked increment up to three times, if I do not save and I go to load again, we go back to a click count of zero. If I click up to a number of clicks, let's say four, and then I save, now I'll load, and we see that we've properly got four. Let's close and open the Unity scene. And here, from the beginning of the Unity scene, we see that we've got four and that the has operation is true. So here we've seen starting out with no data, saving the data, changing and saving the data, stopping and starting Unity, and the load operation works. If you want to take a closer look at the code here, you can look at the example local disk storage 01 file. So here's the one example file. We see several different things happening. We have a load method, an increment method, and a save method. So how do we construct the object that we're loading and saving? At the top of the very same file, or in whichever file you like, you create the data object. Now you're pretty free to create it however you'd want. You just want to have any public fields, either serialized or set with public, that will be uh, saved to disk. My convention here is to have a private value, which is going to work for my object-oriented approach, and then set it serialized so that it gets properly written to disk. Then here at the top, we have an attribute that decides where on your local system will this be stored. You give it a relative path and then choose streaming assets or other options. I'm storing in streaming assets. That's everything that you need. This data is ready to be loaded and saved on disk. Here we are inside Unity in the SimCity Web3 sample game. Let's start by looking at the readme. In each of these projects, the readme is a great way to get started. We've already set up here the admin part, the setup window, the configuration asset, but we'll take a look at that again in a moment. We'll click the add example scenes to build settings. I suggest you do that before you give it a run on your end. We can also update the layout here. There we go. It just gives us a nice layout on the screen here. If you're going to be working with the Web3 contracts, you can look at step in six. And then you want to go ahead and start opening up one of the scenes. So we're going to look at the configuration asset. If I click that there and select it, let's set the service type. So if we set it to contract here, that's meant for production. That is going to use online blockchain technology. And for discussion here, we're going to look at the local disk storage. That's going to be the option for us now. Let's go ahead and run that one. And we'll open up our first scene. 
and we'll press play. So here we'll go into settings. We see that we have no properties yet. The settings is a place that allows us to reset all the data just for development. This is a useful settings to have. This isn't intended for end users to use in a game. You would back out, go into the map here, and we see we're able to scroll around on the map, explore different places. Now let's add a property and make sure that it stays persisting. Here we can see that two properties are found. And when we go back to the map, we can see our two properties there. So this represents the complete solution. Let's take a look at getting to a nice starting point so that we can do the development. So for this video, we're going to use the service that has the dot video start. So we'll delete the one that's used in production and rename the other. Now when we open that up, it has comments, so let's uncomment it. This is the storage service class, and we're going to do all of our adjusting inside this class. Here's the highlights. We're going to update the load, the save, and the delete methods. Okay, I've pasted in a solution for the load property data's async. Let's see how it works. Well, firstly, what we're going to do here is get our data from a new method, the load sim city local data. Let's see how that's set up. Just above here, I've got a new method. I'm realizing that we're going to be loading and saving the complete data set quite a bit, so I have a custom method here to do the load operation. Let's take a look at the highlights. First, we'll check to see if we already have data. If we do, we'll load it. If we don't, we'll create a new object, just in the normal way that you would. You could populate it here with whatever defaults you like. And then we return that from the method. That's it. Now, one key thing here is that we created a custom data object. Let's see how to create any custom data object for use with local disk storage. Next, let's handle how to save properties. Now, saving is complete. Let's take a look at how it works. Well, anytime we're about to save, we'll just load the fresh data. We'll search and see if what we're about to be saved already exists. If it doesn't exist, we'll add it, and then we'll save. Now, there's a few new operations here. We have a new method for save. Let's take a look at that. We pass in the data to be saved, and then we use local disk storage to save it. Something else that's new is when we're looking for does this property data already exist, we use a new method called our same property datas. Here's how to set that up. What I do is I just think out loud about which are the properties within this object that would be truly unique for each object. Now there's a latitude and longitude as well as an owner address. A game like this shouldn't allow you to store two properties in the exact same spot, so probably latitude and longitude is enough of a unique check. But just to add it in there, I also check that they don't have the same owner. That way I'm trying to say, is this property truly unique from this other property? That helps us know if we have any errors in our saving algorithms. Next, let's take a look at how we would delete one property. This happens in the game if you click on a property that exists in the map and click the minus button. There's the complete solution. Let's take a look. First, as a best practice, we're loading a fresh copy of the data. We're looking to see if what we're about to delete does exist in the data set. If it exists, we remove it and then we save again. Finally, let's look at how we would delete all the data. Let's say that we were in the settings menu and we click the delete all, this operation would fire. This is the complete solution. Let's step through it. First, we load a fresh set of the data, then we clear out the data, then we save that data now that it's been cleared. Now that we've finished this script, let's take a look at the game running again. Here's the game running. This is the settings showing that we don't have any properties. Here in the game, we have no properties. Let's add a couple. Now 
and go back and check the settings. Looks like we have two properties. When we reload the map, we see that we have those two properties. Let's delete one. And when we check the settings again, we see that we've got one. Let's try this delete all button. There we go, we've got no properties. So we've seen the load operation work, the save operation work, as well as being able to delete and delete all. That's it. Level up your Web3 development skills by building weekend projects. Sign up at moralis.io slash projects. Visit docs.moralis.io to download and get started. Thanks.